Okay, it's uh, 6.01, I'll call the meeting to order. Do we need to get people to like sign in, all our visitors? We should know who's here, yeah. I'll maybe have a sign up sheet. Let's grab it, that'd be easiest to think. Unless you've got one. If I could just get ask everybody to uh, just sign in so we have a record of who is here at the meeting, please. Here, so we'll move to the first thing on the agenda. I can find it here in the piles. So, we'll move on to the uh, minutes of the August 21st meeting. Anybody have any comments or anything to, to say about the minutes? Nope. Everybody's had a chance to review them. Mm -hmm. I did, Mr. Chairman. I made a few, you know, uh, adjustments that I sent to the... Um, Clerk and she made them. So what you have is what I think is the most current. So okay. Anybody like to make a motion to approve the meetings or the minutes? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Motion made by uh, Rich and seconded by Jay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Do we have anything tonight? Nope. Uh, how about anybody open forum want to bring anything before the board? So we'll move on to the financial report. One second, Brad. Can we bring something? Like, can we bring something before the board in there, or well, does it have to go on the agenda? It's, it's if we brought something up, it's nothing we could vote on or discuss but it, for well, like just more of a procedural thing like yeah. could we request that moving forward that we get documentation say the one week prior to our meeting and only you know set a timeline so we only discuss information we have from that point forward i mean getting stuff four hours between before a meeting is Tough to review. Uh, somewhat somewhat inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. So people it's are working. Not, yeah. I, I do. I don't know if that's something that we'd have to check with, uh, with like the town administrator or someone from the town to see what kind of limits we can put on that. If I can, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So just so you know, I called the town clerk uh, when this happened, frankly, because it is. <laughs> difficult for us to really be prepared to discuss when it's minute you know hours before i asked her if it's because it wasn't in the agenda whether it can be discussed and whether it potentially could be voted on and she said that because it it applies to what is on the agenda which is the bulkhead and the floats and you know the project itself um, it can be so while we have a deadline to get our submit our agenda and items posted in a week ahead of time, um, thank you. They can make changes and submit them up until the meeting starts. So that's part of open meeting law. Now, if we're not prepared to discuss it, then we can say that, yeah. and they'll have to come back. So, but. There's nothing that says they can't. Mm -hmm. Okay. But as a committee, can we? I I don't think if it, if that's the open meeting law, I think we have to go by what the, the law is. Now, like like um, mm -hmm. our master said, if if we don't have a we don't feel like we have prepared enough to discuss it, we can always postpone it till the next meeting. But we at least have to accept. From what I, the way I understand it, that's correct. The this uh, information. Correct. 
Cool. So I think we're back to the financial report. Okay. Uh, it was in the packet. You guys have seen it, I'm sure. Um, big discrepancy in visitor dockage, if you see. I mean, that's really what makes up the shortage that we've had so far, August of, uh, you know, August now to previous uh, FY24. Some of that's timing. Some of it is we've got more people using their slips. You know, when people don't use it, we have a number of people who have a slip that may not use it for a year, whatever, and we fill those with transients. That always changes, you know. So um, we have continued to be full pretty much all summer long. Uh, we got occasional 20 foot slips open for transient that aren't being used, but. All the big slips, 30, 40, and 50, we've been full all summer. So I'm not, it's not alarming to me, that number. It's just, you know, that's the way it works. If there's any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Anybody else have anything on the, uh, on that subject? <clears throat> Hearing none, well, let's uh, move on to the, um, New business. So, Mr. Kel Kelleher? That would be me. <clears throat> Where would you like me, Mr. Chairman, to speak from? Um, maybe just up over here in the corner. Right here? Like, like the bad boy corner? Yes. <laughs> okay. If you could just um, just say your name for the, for the people that are watching. Sure. My name is Mark Kelleher. I live in West Howard. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep doing the closes there. I'm going to keep so, my name is Mark Kelleher. I'm from West Howard. I'm speaking to you tonight as a uh, taxpayer and a resident. Um, and what I want to speak to you about is just the results of a survey and some uh, information I had regarding non taxpayer rates for slips and more. <clears throat> and I want to differentiate. I'm not talking about summer residents who. I'm here just during the summer. They are taxpayers, so it's people from outside the town who don't pay taxes. How I came about this is I have a mooring in Chatham, and I pay a non-resident fee. And a uh, and um, <clears throat> a friend of mine has a slip at Sacquatucket, and uh, he was telling me that he paid, he had, adjacent to him, he had a, a resident of Chatham, and he paid the same rate as he did. So that seemed a little bit... Unfair to me in the sense that I, in Chatham I'm paying an on resident fee and here we're not. So I did some research and it's in your package, but um, I did some research on Cape and I found out that um, seven of the ten towns that I surveyed charged, um, charged more for non taxpayers. And the, the fees were, could be relatively small, from hundreds of dollars up to almost $1,300 in, in film. And uh, are in one of those towns. And there is a one page handout that I did give to the chair to hand around so it's easy to refer to. Um, That's just a smaller version of what was in the packet. Yeah, just a smaller version in case you want to do it. Um, and there is a rationale. There was a, um, you know, we have split fees in town for shellfish licenses, for beach parking, for dump stickers. So the idea of split fees for, um, non-taxpayers is is accepted and there was a uh, legal ruling back in 2005 that by um, KP law that you could charge split fees regarding moorings and slips because basically um, those boat owners were using police and fire services and harbor master services and not paying for them so um, that's part of what I found and that's what the graph shows um, I think it's especially important for you to, and this is just advisory, just to consider as, as, as you get into planning for next year, is that, um, you know, the harbor has some of the largest capital projects upcoming other than uh, wastewater. You have $10 million for a new bulkhead down in Sacquatucket, $2 million for Allen Harbor Jetty. The town just borrowed $40 million for uh, wastewater. So. There's a lot of debt that the town is undertaking, so I, I really just wanted to bring it to your attention so that you know anything that can reduce the burden for our taxpayers 
would be a, a, a good thing. I, I don't know how many non-taxpayers you have, whether it would amount to anything like that, but I think it's good practice to try and generate as much revenue as you can, especially if it's for non-taxpayers who utilize our services. I know you have a big meeting tonight. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, if you don't, you can, or if you have questions, you can email me afterwards. But everything I have that I've given you, given to you, I got off town town websites. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Can we ask the harbor master what he thinks of the uh, proposal. Uh, Mr. Keller brought that up on his own, so that that's not you know coming from me. Um, we have done a couple of rate changes in the past, um, presented you know, both uh, situations, resident, non-resident, when surveys were done, when, I'm re when I go for the Board of Selectmen, I'm required to do a survey. And um, you know, we've always been in the position since I've been here of, of just having one, one rate. Um, certainly something to consider. I think uh, we have, uh, utilize an awful lot of state grant money to help our facilities. Uh, I think that needs to be considered. He's included moorings in that survey. Mass general law, you can't discriminate based upon residency. So any figures, anybody who's doing resident, non-resident for moorings is not legal. Um, so how many, I don't know how many non-taxpayers we have, but uh, Something to consider. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Um, questions? Anything like like to add? Anybody in the audience? Do we have here tonight? Should we might be able to mute. <laughs> yeah, uh, we just ask anybody that's watching in if they could just mute, mute your uh, microphones unless you're actually looking to um, add something to the conversation or to speak. Yeah. I think just from what I'm getting from everybody here i don't know if anybody's ready to make anything right now so i think this might be something that we should consider and maybe revisit in the future um maybe sometime when we're getting ready to plan for the next fiscal year fiscal year yeah so so you're not uh, muted and whoever caller one is you're not muted please mute yourself C seems to be not muted. It keeps coming up. Before we move on to the next one, Mr. Mr. Kelleher, if you if you'd like, if you want to bring this back bef before us, like closer into when we're getting ready to talk about next season, um, we'd be happy to, to to look into that further about that time. Okay, when would that be? Well, let me just, if I may, yes, Mr. Chairman. So we had a. Just pull out my memo that I wrote to the selectmen. I brought it. We had a rate change started in in uh, a voting season. Uh, 2022 was the first uh, increase. And when I went before the selectmen in November of 21, so rate change to start for voting season 22. I had recommended and they accepted that uh, we do an 8% increase of fees. And that 8% was 2% per year. 
that was being proposed for seasonal slip and more rates offloading rates and some other rates with the exception of transient dockage which increased sixteen percent so my plan had been every four years to to kind of increase rates or at least look at increasing rates so we are coming into our fourth year so any rate change that we would have would be for 25 but now is kind of when you start looking at that rate change for the following okay so we're, you know so yeah i mean it's it, it's something that we as a board i think uh, will look at yeah and you know next month all our uh letters for dockage start going out you know the fees uh, you know dockage start payments start in december so i mean we're we're already upon you know for next boating season but again my plan was to kind of do a four-year look yeah at rate increase so no no increase for for the next boating season right 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 this would this boating season would be the fourth year of yeah. that eight, yeah. yeah so it'll okay. probably be around this time next year but we need to start looking at because we can start looking at proposing yeah rate changes right because you got to get them approved and surveys so to to commence in voting season the following year so, so maybe, maybe sometime next summer uh probably yeah. yeah something like that okay yeah um time to move on to the old business so we have um the bsc group back with uh new plans or updated plans for their um for the proposed project at 11 uh, River Bend Road. Mr. John, I wonder if you could bring the public up to speed with the uh, changes that, the last minute changes that you guys were talking about? Well, that's what we're here to, we're here to wait to hear their proposal and what those changes are. Last minute changes? That's what they're going to bring and, and tell us about right now. Um, we looked at all the documents that were on the website so if any documents came in the last four hours and weren't on the website yeah. we didn't get a chance to look at them so i don't think you guys can take action on it um this meeting based on our not well, being able to look at it first we've got to first we've got to hear what their what their newest um proposal is and what they've brought forward forward to us before we can even consider it well, wouldn't it seem reasonable though we haven't had a chance to even consider what what changes have been uh, right ne neither have we really so, so but by open meeting law we have to we have to hear them out because they are on the agenda okay. yeah. mr crispin please yes i'm here good evening hey, good evening and in, in in the room the two applicants i believe are there um i believe are there um i had forwarded a uh a a very short PowerPoint that summarizes the changes that were just mentioned. Um, and if someone can put that up or I can share my screen, whatever is easier. Do we have a share your screen? Yeah, I would think it'd be easiest to share your screen. All right, let's 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 try that. I, I know I had trouble with this last time. So <laughs> what do you do? Uh, let's see, where is share screen on this guy? Um, share, down here, can I do this? Select a tab, a window, this one. All right, are you seeing a thing that says added floats on it? Yes. Yes, okay, so let's we'll see if we can make this a little bit bigger for those of you who are, <clears throat> are there. Let's start this from the beginning, slideshow from the beginning, because this should make it bigger for everybody. All right, everybody seeing the big picture here? Still the same size it was before. Okay, why does it do that? Sorry about that. Every, every, every presentation system is different. Okay, we've seen the title page here, Coastal Bulkhead Replacement. Yes. Yes, okay. Every, every, I think everybody knows what this is. It's the same slide we've always used, but just to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about, we're on the Herring River. We submitted a 
plan uh, to you folks uh, a week or so ago. And after that was submitted, there was a lot of conversation amongst the uh, engineers, structural people, the, uh, the applicant uh, and whatnot. And the plan that you have in front of you basically shows three foot floats in the lower left hand corner of this, the circle with, a, with an obelisk around the corner. And it does not show added floats across the top of the sheet. So what we put together today was a, a modified plan for clarity for you. Um, and, and what hopefully was delivered to you this afternoon was a five scale plan of just the work area. It didn't show the whole property, didn't show the, the whole river, didn't show it was really just the work area, which was included in two sheets. And, it, and this is the first one. The red line is the location of the existing bulkhead. The heavy black line is the edge of the salt marsh. Uh, the circle area on the right side is the limit of the mooring that's right in front of the site. The two rectangles in the upper right are the uh, the two floats that are there. And that's the existing conditions with no other information on it, really. Uh, and you have a five scale, hopefully five scale paper plot of those, because I know you like to look at paper plots. There is also a second sheet which just shows the proposed conditions which I'll call it here a little bit just for clarity, but the blue line is the existing bulkhead. The, uh, the, the 21-foot is the dimensions from the edge of the channel to the edge of the floats, and you will see in the bottom of this sheet, the three-foot narrow floats are proposed to be eliminated, and that was really a safety concern. Um, if you've ever walked on a three-foot wide float, uh, you know that it's like trying to walk in a canoe. Uh, imagine unloading scallop cages on that, and the client said, this probably is not safe. That realization came after we submitted you that, so I apologize for the late delay on that, but um, our goal here is to get this process as far away from the channel as possible, and that's kind of what we've done here. Um, as early as this morning, you will see a bend. Um, oh, the, the red line is the proposed bulkhead uh, right here where the seat sheet piles will go. We put a bend in this and we pulled it back in another six feet. So we're really quite a ways from the channel with this revised plan. And the biggest change, quite frankly to me, um, is the uh, replacement of the floats that were down at the bottom up at the top and these will be in the cove. Uh, it means a little more dredging, but it doesn't really change. It, it doesn't impact the channel uh, to any degree. And to put those kind of in perspective, um, the, the reddish line is where the plan was when we first started this discussion um, a month or two back. The green line is where we are today, and the, the existing float is here. So we're, we're actually six feet landward of the edge of the existing float out here, which makes your, your channel bigger. Um, also, the elimination of the floats at the bottom end, the little three foot ones that we had on the, the plan we gave you a week ago, widens the channel at this point from 103 feet to 110 feet. So a very quick summary, what are we doing? We move the existing bulkheads. We replace them with a new steel shield, a sheet pile bulkhead. And just for the record, those are eight linear feet less than the prior plan because it's, it's reconfigured. We're going to maintenance stretch down to minus six uh, so we can do the aquaculture. We're going to install the wood piles and the guide rails. And this is for down to 16 piles from 22 because of the um, configuration that was done, uh, changed, suggested today. The floats are going in year round. And as mitigation, we actually end up with a wider channel than exists today. There's no salt marsh alteration. We're going to create 440 square feet of salt marsh behind the bulkhead. They're going to donate scallop seeding around town, and the denitrification results in improved water quality. And that's really the project in a nutshell. So that, that's the biggest plan change from what you saw uh, a week ago, if you had a chance to look at the plans, is the removal of the floats at the bottom and the addition of the ones at the top, which are out of the, the travel way, so to save the channel. And with that, I know Dan wants to mention uh, the, the scallop uh, 
business or not? Do you have it? Is he there? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'd like to hear comments. I don't think there's anything really to say. That's, that's about it. So is, is that the, um, is that the presentation for, for now? That, that, that's it in a nutshell. And okay. I think it's the, the information that is relevant to your commission. At least we haven't gone into all the wetland stuff. That's a separate commission. Yeah, I don't think we, we want also to did get... submit the revised um, shellfish memo and photo pages. If anyone needs me to show images of that, um, the the focus of that shellfish survey was to get areas uh, behind the wall, so landward of the wall. Um, we conducted eight three by three plots along that uh, exposed area between the eroded salt marsh and the existing bulkhead. Um, as I said, no shellfish were found. We weren't able to survey that northern edge, um, and that's due to the fact that there's existing vegetated salt marsh, uh, so we didn't want to disturb that, so visual observations were done uh, only. So, um, Mr. Harbormaster. What do you have? You had a chance to to review. I will comment if you'd like for me to. Yes, please. So, I think right off the bat, um, I, I mean, it was interesting to hear, but I don't think we should even attempt to take action tonight on this plan. I mean, I haven't had the opportunity to thoroughly look and see what impact it will be to add those floats to the north, and um, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see it from the water. Whenever any plan comes to me, I require the engineer to put stakes out so I can see visually and go do a site visit. And I haven't had the opportunity to do that with this plan. So I would ask for that. Um, it's not in alignment with my input that I had last year, our last meeting, which I thought 30 feet starting from the north end down with the floats would, 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 would work without too much impact, and yet we're going even further with four more floats and so forth. So I, I think, Mr. Lang, uh, let me just finish. Okay. I just think change after change and last minute change is really not fair to us who have to kind of evaluate and look at things. So I, like was mentioned here, you know, from my perspective and for everybody here who's interested, you know, we try to put the agenda out a week ahead of time so people have the opportunity to look at and to study and to, to, to formulate some opinions. Having it four hours before we show up, it just isn't enough time. So uh, that's my input. Uh, I need time to digest and to do a site visit and to look closely at it. I can tell you right now, you're you're going further down the bulkhead than I had, had suggested and, and what I feel is appropriate um, uh, on the face of the bulkhead. And uh, I'll have to look at the northern end. So, Mr. Chairman, that's my input. Thank you. Um, before I open it up to the public, can I have uh, anybody on the board? I, no, no, no motions yet. Are there any comments or any questions from anybody on, on the uh, committee for either or I, I would like to see the evaluation from the harbor master uh, before I make a decision. Anybody else? I mean, I guess my only comment would be is, you know, our purview, once again, like Jay said last weekend, or last week, is its effect on the waterway, not anything Correct. to do with a business, what the property is zoned for, what is allowed there. I know there's a lot of emotion, but this isn't the forum to really vet that. Um, it's the physical impact on, on the waterway. On the water. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's all right. we should and that's, be discussing. That's all we can dis right. discuss based on what uh, yeah. our our direction directive is from the Board of Selectmen is we can only we can only consider how this affects the waterways. Um, but what I'm hearing from the board is, is 
we need more time to um, consider this latest change of plan. Is that what I'm getting from everybody? Yes. Yes. I do want to open up to anybody that's out in the out in the public here um, to make any comments. But I just do want to remind everybody that the only thing we can really discuss and we can consider is is how it affects uh, the waterway, the river, the navigable channel, that kind of things. Can Can I just before yes. we open it up? Can I? I have one more question, if I'm yes, if I may, um, to the applicant. So, I read in the narrative that is addressed to the Conservation Commission about the uh, placement of the new bulkhead and how it's going to be about three feet landward of the current bulkhead at midpoint and about six feet at the north end and that that's that's included in this plan that's correct okay so that same measurement that same placement of the bulkhead was included in the previous plan so nothing has changed with regard to the placement of the bulkhead I, no that actually okay. the so it make your your engineer made it seem like we were pulling the bulkhead in even further but that's not the case is no, it, it is. That, that, is, that is true because there is an angle in the middle of it. Okay, so now, it's more than six feet at the northern end. At the northern end, it's now more than six feet. Okay, well that needs that, to be clearly um, indicated in a plan okay. as well. Yep. Yeah. And, okay. Thanks. That's okay. all I have. I, I just want to make sure I understood that, Mr. Lang. Uh, John, I'd just love to get a little more clarification because sure. my understanding when. At, our, at the last meeting and then in your letter yeah. to ComCom, was that the south end where it's most narrow was the place you didn't like the full six foot wide and our proposal last Wednesday came back with two of them, so 24 feet of three foot wide only at the south end where the channel was most impacted. So and I made it very clear last meeting, and you can check the, the tapes and the minutes if you'd like, but I, I, I felt very comfortable from starting at the north end going, you know, 30 feet down, so three 10 by six floats placement on the on the face of the bulkhead to do your your hatchery or your, you know, your scallop bags. And then on the north end, I was fine with what you had proposed going, you know, north into the bay. Because so, it was out so, of the channel. Because it was out of the channel, okay. right? So from essentially that midpoint or, you know, from beyond that 30 feet to the south end of the, it, it's tight. And that was my concern. So I see now, instead of three, you're going four or 11 foot, four or five. You remove but, three, so 36 feet of total spots yeah. from the south side. Yeah, you moved, well, we, you we moved eliminated, the smaller ones, we eliminate, right? No, we eliminated everything from the original plan, okay. and the ones we submitted had had 24 feet of three foot wide. Okay, so the, the so latest plan that I got four hours ago, I count yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six foot floats at the face of the pier. But it's no longer having three more I understand that. that go but to you're going the south to beyond boundary. what I had what I had said would be my understanding was the other way that you were talking about the first three that we originally showed no no this was from before the you south even, end up this was before you okay. even proposed the three foot wide floats okay. this was that, last that, meeting okay. I'm just trying to understand yeah. which direction we were coming from yeah. okay and then I know we were looking at trying to have enough square footage to make sense to be doing it. Yes. And so and, and the I justification for going up into the Bay Area was that it is no longer at all in the channel. Right. Understand. And get lets and us just have like a more look stable at it surface. Before I can but, comment but, on it. Yep. Yeah. And I don't think the I don't think the bottles that are there are quite at the the depth the close. Oh, sure they don't not, seem to stay there new, so. <laughs> yeah i'd like to i'd like to yeah. actually see yep. this so okay ask a question 
Yes, so if you could just, we, before, before you, you comment, if you can just um, say your name for name the people Howard that are watching. Curtin. My name is Howard Curtin, 25 Harbor Way. The Waterways Commission has no interest at all in anything that's outside the channel that has nothing, to, that anything that has to do with navigation is all you're interested in, nothing else. Is that the way I'm understanding this? No, no, I think we do have the, Water, full, the full waterway. Yes. And it, there's because I mean so, there's so the, so the the impact to the to the um, to the to the commercial enterprise in the cove then does have your interest in some way shape or form is that correct? I would yes it's part of the waterway so it's not I'm not we're not completely focused on the channel. You're not dismissing that. We're not dismissing the cove, <coughs> but but your primary interest is navigation. Is no, our 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 interest is the the entire waterway. I think that's what Mr. Brudy said. It's yeah. the waterway. It's the it's the entire waterway. Waterway. the The channel is part of it. That's that that is. As I don't is want to. The cove. As is the cove. Yes. Nat Damon, um, J Street. Uh, I grew up sailing on this river and boating on this river, and I feel like I know this river very very well, like truly down to the square foot. And I ask you guys, look at this river during low tide, please. Um, I've run aground exactly in this area, in this cove, several times, whether it's our 22-foot cat boat, or whether it's a Zodiac, or whether it's a Cape Dory, whether it's a kayak. Um, it happens. You run aground. You learn through the experience. This is, you know, this river is recreational. These are kids floating. These are kids learning how to row. These are kids learning how to skull. You know, kids are starved for nature. This is not a time in life in our society that really embraces recreational outdoor use. And that's what a lot of these families are um, using the, the waterway of the Herring River for, um, particularly in the season, the summer season. I worry about kids learning how to sail. I worry about my, you know, anybody behind, behind the wheel of a boat um, accidentally bumping into one of these floats, <clears throat> all right? It's like an electric fence. I, I'm, I'm worried about a kid maybe damaging one of these oyster cage, uh, scallop cages. Um, what happens then? That that adds a whole element of, of stress and strain to an already uh, to a sport and a recreational activity that requires so much thinking and sensing already. It's currents, it's tides. When you get the wind coming from the east or the west, these boats are perpendicular. Um, there's a slide that was really rushed through that I think speaks so well toward the exact location of the Herring River where this very sensitive operation, corporate operation is looking to be commercial, is looking to be built. It's different when you run aground in the mud than if you bump into the scallop cages. And there's an image there that just shows this is squeeze, this is this, you know, kind of squeezed part of the artery here. So I just ask that you guys look at this from the perspective of how the river is used, how the waterway is allocated in terms of safety measures, and understand like this is not a when we're talking about building on the on the boundaries of the Herring River, we're not talking about, you know, this is naturally formed of ledges. This is not glacial um, ledges on, that are that are on the boundary of, of this river. This is mud flow. This is mud flats. And it was mentioned in the environmental committee meeting a couple of weeks ago that the past couple of years have been severe weather-wise on the Herring River. So all of this is going to have an effect on the recreational use of the river, the way the river's been used for generations. And I just ask that you think about this also. Safety, liability, um, and uh, and really definition. So. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Noreen K. Halen. I live in West Howitch. Um, I have some pictures uh, that you can have and share. Uh, they're double-sided. You can pass the papers around. There's a page you can each keep. Um, the boats go horizontal, perpendicular, and certain winds and tides, um, and it's very hard to navigate through that, area, and it happens in that area of the river, right at uh, Lebanon River Bend. It's, um, you know, difficult to navigate. You want to make sure that you realize that in certain um, winds and currents, they go horizontal, and it's very difficult for anyone to get through. And if 
you know, we have floats there. Um, and then uh, when boats have to tie up to floats to do, you know, get the scallops from the cages, um, you know, that's an additional six feet plus the, whatever the width of the boat is. Uh, it's gonna get, make navigation very difficult through the channel. Um, the, one of the things I'd like clarification on, you know, from the applicant is um, how many floats are being proposed in the square footage. Um, there seems to be some discrepancy. Obviously, there's a new plan, so I don't know it, but it's gone from 703 to 720 to 703 to 621. Um, you know, so I think we need some clarification on how many floats are being proposed and um, where, what the square footage is. Um, also, the size of the bulkhead. You know, they're not just um, requesting to replace the bulkhead. They're putting in a whole new structure for um, scallop farming. And from what I can tell, it's already had a lot of the um, plans they put have no scale on them, but it appears to me it might be eight feet out of the water of the bulkhead, you know, so it would be dangerous. Like when we look out, we're not gonna be able to see any of the kayakers or swimmers or um, boaters, some of the boats, we're not gonna even see them going by because the bulkhead's gonna be so high. If someone has a problem and is in danger, you know, nobody's gonna see them to be able to help them because the bulkhead's gonna be blocking them from people on shore. Um, and then it appears that the bulkhead's gonna be eight feet high. And then the timber pilings, the poles that the floats are gonna be attached to are four feet higher than that. So it's gonna be 12 feet high. That's pretty significant. Um, I could be wrong, but that's how, when I'm looking at the plans, that's what I'm reading. But again, there's no scale on most of these plans, so it's hard to know that. Again, that would be something that would be good to have clarification from them on. Um, you know, I think that there is potential danger, um, you know, with the navigation and, um, you know, all the people who use this river for recreation, that area of the river is very, um, you know, narrow and the boat, when the boats swing on the moorings, it's very difficult. And, um, you know, so those are some of the different things that um, I'd like to have more clarification on and you be aware of. Um, and I, I guess that's all my comments for right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, I just, so I, I agree completely that there shouldn't be any, I mean, I, I agree with what, what you guys are doing that's, you know, very last minute. I think, um, oh, my name is Dan Ward. I'm with uh, Jeff on, on doing the Scala project. Um, I think the, 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 the multiple changes and the kind of last minute modifications, really we're just trying to, to find something that limits the impact on navigation to the best extent possible, right? And so the kind of last minute thing we were talking about doing today is, is if you, I don't know if you have this plan or not, but there's, a, there's one where 48 feet down from the top, the bulkhead's moved in, it, it, it pivots in, um, and that was something we came up with today, to an additional way to get that upper section out of the, out of the, uh, the waterway. And it, it comes in another three and a half feet up at the top. Is that something valuable or not? You know, like, does it, is that something that's, that matters? I, or should we just kind of keep it in the same line? Because it, I, that I, was the intent, but, you know. I think, hearing from what the harbor master has to say, that he would like to go out and actually visit the site where it's marked, how this current plan, if I'm, if I'm um, speaking right, uh, John. Yeah, I mean. To, to, to visit to, the site, and that's pretty common on the, on, on a lot of these things is to do a site visit. Oh, 100%. I'm just saying that this particular one that to was submitted today question, can be yeah. ignored. If that doesn't matter, we'll go back to the old one, you know? If I may? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, clearly, the less we're going into the current waterway, the better. 
right? So all along, all of our feedback, I think, has been consistent in that, you know, your, your proposal last time was just this, to bring it in, you know, six feet to the north, three feet mid, you know, almost same spot on the south, and I think you received positive input for that effort, and if you're bringing it even more so, I think that only benefits the waterway. So, are you wasting your time? No, I don't think so. But I think we should be able to see that ahead 100%, of time. A hundred percent. It's yeah. just before we mark anything, I just want to make sure that this is actually like a final, final plan because we're kind of grasping at straws trying to say, well, what if we make the floats three feet? And now we find out that that wasn't actually... You didn't want them on the south side anyways. We were looking, we were trying to bring them in from the south when really we should have been well, looking at Well, you should have known that based upon our meeting <laughs> last time. So, <laughs> so we're not having, a, uh, we're not not having a moving target here. I, I think we've in been no pretty way. consistent. So. In no way is it All a right. moving target. All right. I left confused. It's, it's my fault. So, so bringing it in that top 48 feet would in some way benefit the, oh. the, the idea here of moving things further out. <laughs> I think anything would benefit bring it in out of the out of the uh, channel or further away from the center of the channel. Like that's only going to benefit everybody if that's something that's feasible. Would it be possible to utilize all 48 feet instead of just the top 30 if we're pivoting from 48 feet down? Now that we're pulling all of that wall back in to all the way down to 48 feet and just say the 36 to the south don't utilize because we can't pivot that. But the 48... Well, again, north. if I may. Yes. Uh, again, I, I can't answer that question because I don't know where the bulkhead is. You know, so you're pulling what section, how much further. So uh, I, I don't know yet. So you're going to have... Well, we'll certainly look at that. If you come with a plan that says you want to utilize that full 48, I, you're going to have to show that it's not sticking out as much as the current plan is. So maybe that's so, so maybe um, ignore what you have. We're gonna submit an official plan with all of the documentations and the marking and the scale and everything from that 48 foot up. So just those four floats on the on that side, so nothing south of that pivot point, and then the additional ones at the top, and that limits us by another 36 square feet. So instead of being 720, which was initially proposed, is 36 feet less than that, because there was 10 floats proposed including doubling up along the top now it's only nine so we're reducing the total square footage by 36 square feet of what was originally proposed we'll only use from the 48 foot up where we the pivot point is and south of that no proposed floats at all and that's something that we can submit through BSC with the right you know because this is this is a talking point right this is like and I'm not saying it's moving goalposts at all it's my fault I I'm the one that's that left confused right so it's just clearing up the confusion for myself so that we can submit a whole series of plans with all the details and with all the scale and with all the stamps and everything else that you would want and mark it out in the waterway. But we don't want to put something back out there just to come back and be like, well, Dan, you misunderstood it again, you know? So like, so maybe, does that sound like something that we could mark at least and get, and get well, comments I'm, on? I'm telling you, from my perspective, the two further south floats that you currently have in this updated plan mm -hmm. don't work with me. Even the one north of the pivot point? So you the... have, you know, the top three is kind of where we had ended last meeting. Even though 12 feet south of that is pivoted in? But again, I, I don't see that here. So, okay. okay, and that's not what you had in the narrative that I read. This was all last minute. I know. Okay. Again, so, my so, fault. No, I so my that fault. is my fault. problematic. Okay, so why don't we would it be okay with the committee if we start with that and we mark that and we submit those and and we'll go from there and we can at least get comments on that over the next period between now and the next meeting yeah i don't see an issue with with that i just would like to see that that we give time to to be able to go out on site and review whatever the the latest uh or the next <clears throat> plan that's submitted before this committee. That's the next semi-final one that maybe. And 100%. We I think we completely agree. This is more you, there's not even there's a there's a lot missing from this in terms of specific legal ease, right? This is yeah. more of a discussion point of 
We came last time. I'm confused about what the guidance was, not because of your fault, because of mine. Is this what you were hoping to see? And it sounds like kind of yes, kind of no. But I think now, at least personally, I have more guidance about something that maybe would be acceptable. And this pivot point, right? Like we're brainstorming here. We're saying, what can we possibly do to help? And so that was just a last minute thing we came up with today. And it sounds like maybe it'll stick. And so if that's something that sounds like it could be a good thing, generally speaking, let's stick with that. But let's mark yeah. it and let's propose that officially and show it as it relates to the current bulkhead and how far from the waterway. Let's, yeah, let's do it right with the proper narrative. So 100%. I, I mean, I just think that it feels good now that I feel like we have a at least a path towards something that can be commented on. Hi, um, Hi. Noreen Kalen. One, one more point I forgot to mention. Um, last meeting, um, one of the reasons you didn't vote was there was an issue on the property line. And I believe you requested that the applicants do a, um, a survey of the property to determine where the property line was between the two properties, the neighbors. And um, I didn't see that, on, you know, that a survey was done on the information posted. So just wondering if a survey was done or... Um, yes, um, survey was done, and I have had personal communication with Mr. Kelleher that is in full agreement to work out all of the details that apparently his wall was never built out to the property line. It just connected to wherever our seawall ended, which um, must have been two feet over into his property, um, but that that will be worked to his advantage and I'm working on getting a signed document that will say that he'll work with me when we go to put in a seawall. So that it connects correctly to his so that it doesn't cause anybody any damage. Um, as far as I know, um, I don't know, is Elizabeth Pyle online? Who are, who are you? Elizabeth? It's are you the lawyer the representing him. She's there, yeah. Do you want to handle this? Yeah, yes, I just spoke to Mr. Kelleher about an hour ago, and Mr. Lang has requested that um, he you know, send an email, but Mr. Kelleher is not in a position to do that at this time. There has not been an agreement reached. We anticipate that you know there may be some conversations in the future, but this plan was just submitted like I, apparently four hours ago, I haven't seen it, we haven't reviewed it, but uh, this is something that needs to be worked out on an ongoing basis, and there has not been any final determination made yet. So, thank you. I have a question. Um, Jenny yes. Doyle, uh, Griffin, uh, North Road on the Hearing River. Um, we're talking about a site plan. Um, Mr. Harbor Master, I know this isn't exactly waterways, it's probably more conservation, but we're talking about the height of the bulkhead and the pilings being high. Is it possible when you do a visual site visit to have something like a flag lot so that the abutters and the river, the people that live on the river can see how tall all of this is going to be? Is that maybe not your jurisdiction? Perhaps that's conservation, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, conservation is the approving authority on the plan, uh, you know, the, the entire full part of the plan. They're regulatory in nature. I, I would think that they would be able to put a single post that would indicate, give you a reference, mm -hmm. right, of, of what a pile, I mean, that's pretty easy to do, I think. Is there a benchmark on it? Like yeah. Yeah. I, I think the, I, I think we're talking about two and a half to three feet. Dave? How much higher than the existing wall did did we list it? Lift it for it, it. It's it's about two feet, and that really is to um, address global sea level rise that's happened in the last hundred years, and we expect to continue to happen. So we're trying to keep it in line with what was originally built. So and as far as the height of the piles, those are set to the hundred years still water surge level. So that if you get an unexpected storm, nothing floats off of the top of the uh, of the piles. Two feet above the That's kind of standard operating procedure for most uh, of the piles. The piling. How much higher are the pilings than the seawall, Dave? The top of the pile are about two feet higher than the existing one. Are there 
are there uh, posts? The, the that are timber raised posts. Above? The wood piles. Yeah. The wood piles are quite a bit higher because that's the still water surge associated with the hundred year flood. And I, I actually, five point eight feet. So the posts are five, five, six feet higher than the existing wall. Five and a half feet. Five oh, and I know no, five and a half feet from the proposed wall. Five and a half feet above the two feet. Yeah. Above. I, yeah, I, I, it, all the elevations are on the plan. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I I I do know that the pilings have to be a certain height above mean low water, so that's kind of yeah. kind of a set thing with any piling on any dock on anywhere, any body of water. Yeah. Right, but if it's a piling, if it's a piling, it, I do know it has to be set at a certain height above mean low water, and they take like the hundred year storm, predicted storm surge, and all that kind of factors. So anything that's on there, if you get a hundred year storm, it's not going to float off. I do know that. So that's kind of pilings, there's they're kind of if it's they're going to put them in, it's a calculation, and that's that's kind of a regulatory thing where they don't have a say on how high the pilings go. The seawall, they probably yes, but any pilings out on the water that hold any docking structure has to keep that structure in place in a in a hurricane without it floating off. I do have another question. I'm just curious why that's they're not there now with the existing wall. Why are why aren't there you know post the there are metal pipes. pipes. The floating dock is on metal pipes, three inch pipes. So instead of 12 inch poles, there are three inch pipes that are dug into the mud so the holding the, the floating dock. The posts you're, you're proposing are for the docks. That's right. So the, the, it's, it's they're, not, they're not necessary for the wall that's there now. They need, you need them for the docks. They're part of the wall structure. Yeah. One other question, the, the uh, scallop um, baskets that hang underneath, are they rigid? Can they, can they float? How does that work? I mean, you can make them out of different materials. Some can be. What are you going to make them out? Uh, either nylon or um, like a lobster trap wire. Do they basically. float? Or they no, 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 no. So they're weighted, so they go straight down. Because you don't want them, like biologically speaking, you don't want them no, swinging out, and definitely not for navigation. You wouldn't want that either. So everything, everything goes straight down. But just one more question: Do you have pictures of an existing? Um, what you're, what you're proposing here? Yeah, my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. No, but a lot, can. at a large scale. Yeah, yeah. a larger scale. We've got a couple of docks the dock there, Jeff. But do you, is there a larger scale? And the seawall with the structure. I mean, everything is black and white. But is there just curious, a picture yeah. from maybe, you know, a so farm in Maryland or field. something? that or in Maine. A field of these. Or Maine. Yeah, or somewhere. Not that I know. No. I mean, there's no pictures? You just can't the architectural any. drawings. Okay. There's like, no, oh, yeah. nobody has ever gone out and take a photo and said, this is what it's going to look like. So the people that pictures live there, the everything is in black and white. There's plenty of pictures. Just go there is. Yeah. Just go There's photos in the application, actually, of, of the existing system on the river. Yeah, and the wall with right. the pilings up. Just, you know. Yeah. Well, I think to keep things moving, I know, I'm pretty sure that the board just wants to, or the committee just wants to, um, like, probably like to continue this until the next meeting. Yeah. I'm, Is that what I'm... I make a motion that we continue this proposal <coughs> until the next meeting. Okay, I have a, a motion to continue from Jay. Do I have a second? I'll second. We'll have a quick yeah, question. Cool. Okay. John's going to need a second. Is it too late, or would you want to... Accomplish that prior. So I mean, yeah. Well, I, I'm sure these guys. I'll coordinate with them to, to make sure I get out there and get it marked and have we'll, an opportunity. We'll let you know as soon yeah. as we mark. Yeah. So and they did the first time, so oh. I, I know they will. Oh. Just, yeah. Can we just incorporate that in the motion? The, the site, just one more question, Jeff. I agree. The river. Is, well, I think that would be. Rapid movement. Also, think. Again, back to the back, yeah. back to the baskets. Say it again. That You've got stuff in early so protected areas. Time yeah, the baskets, even they're in that. Well, we can, they're not I think we can request that, but we can't hear for, you because there's time. I think it would help all of us. Chairman, you should probably okay. figure out what's going on here. Sorry, my uh, question I think is back to the question. baskets again. 
the river is not like a protected area of water where there's no movement of water. The river gets pretty rapid, the tide changes. Th these baskets are just hanging down there. There's no way for them to just move around and float out. And, uh, so we have a, a similar installation that we're partnering with the town of Yarmouth on in the Bass River right now. And you can come and see those because the, the current in the Bass River directly in the middle of the channel is greater than what it is on the on the sides of the Herring River. There. Is that where the floats are in the middle of the channel? Yeah, that's where we have like sticking out perpendicular from the from the side of the channel. And you can come and check them out right now. They hang straight down right in the middle of the tide. It's like four knots. They hang straight down. There's no And twelve they, months of the year they're there. They don't take the docks out. They don't take the docks out, no. But are you proposing to take the docks out in the winter? No. So the docks are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that a change? Yes, mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. have that's to take our docks out that's in the winter. Been, There's yeah, six, six months. months. Six months. And that's an environmental yeah. concern. Mm -hmm. They need the sunlight. Mm -hmm. That's well, actually it's conservation. That's a con yeah, conservation, that's conservation issue, not okay. not waterways. Waterways. That, that sounds like, but again, the docks, Jeff. The docks are coming out, or they're staying I, in the water. I think we'll, once just again. just as that's a. A cons if that's a conservation issue, we will let uh, the Conservation Commission settle that um, okay. question. But you, you, raise, you raise a good point about the current in the Herring River and the impact on the, the cages, especially as the scallops grow. They're going to need a lot of space to grow in those cages. And again, because of the current and the tides, what happens when you hit it? What happens when you're swimming and you get caught in it? Or what happens when your boat hits it? That's the interruption of commercial versus recreational. Um, so going back to the motion for now, is there anything we need to, to add to that or do we want to second it as it is? So I think it's, it's, we don't have to put anything that you're going to visit the site before. In your motion? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, you can if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. We'll let you know when it's ready. So I have a second on the motion to continue. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We got a unanimous vote to continue until the next meeting. Is that the date for the next meeting? Um, it's on the agenda. No, hold on. Uh, Wednesday, October 16th. October 16th, okay. We'll coordinate with our survey crews, and, and like it was already mentioned, we'll make sure that um, you're all notified so that you know when the site is properly staked out. Thank you. Thank everyone for um, coming by. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pitches. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Let's give everybody a minute to. <laughs> Good job, man. Oh, like, do you all go and visit the site? Or I'm doing fine. Just the harbor mass. He usually does it from boat. We'll go look at it. Can I ask a quick question? On the dock going up for storage, it, it, it is an issue of, for uh, Amy, right? For, for uh, you're talking about for storage of storage? Yeah. In other words, we have to put it. You can't store it on the bank. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's right. That's correct. Right. right. So that's that's a rule, in other words. That's yeah. correct. Okay. Yeah. But he is planning to leave the floats in here around. As he said. If that's your, if that's where yeah, you're going. But that's where I'm going. I Why should he have an exception to Well, I mean, that's going to be conservation. It's going to have to rule. wrestle with that. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Okay, now we can move on to the uh, Harbor Master's report because I don't see anyone from the board to select.
Anybody got any questions about my report? <laughs> no. <laughs> so many. Uh, what can I tell you? Well, it's all in there. I mean, transient dockets, slip reservations, number of parking tickets, processed our $106,000 grant that we got for Trudging Island Harbor. Um, so we every year we've been successful getting some help with the dredge costs, which is huge. Um, you know, we had a couple of interesting boat cases, uh, assist cases, as outlined there. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've been busy, but it's been good. If there's any questions, I certainly can try to address it. I don't have any questions. Mm -hmm. Move on to um, what's next? Okay, correspondence. Everybody get a chance to read the uh, the charge. Yeah, exactly. So just so you know, you know, it went back and forth a couple of times with the board of selectmen. You know, we came out with what we had suggested and what I uh, was provided a template kind of to utilize uh, because they wanted to try to standardize. Um, the committee charges and so um, anyways uh, there was a request for a slight change uh, that I made that didn't really impact anything other than I think there was concern from one of the selectmen that um, the way it was worded was that the committee required permission from the town administrator or no the selectmen or the harbor master in order to convene meetings so we 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 softened that language a little bit um and uh again it didn't impact anything as far as the it was in the the purpose uh section i think Or maybe it was in scope. So waterways committee will work. That, that's what it. The very first sentence in scope. It says the waterways committee will work collaboratively with the harbor master select board in public to create agenda items to be discussed at a public and and posted meeting. That first sentence was adjusted because I, I think it, the previous wording had been more kind of like under the direction or with with the agreement of or something like that, but. Anyways, so this is our new charge approved by the board select. So one thing you'll see in there, one thing they specifically wanted me to add was, and we do it, kind of we do it when I feel like there's a need to make an adjustment to a harbor management plan, but they specifically state that an annual review of the harbor management plan shall be conducted by the waterways committee. So, you know, maybe moving forward, we should think about over the year taking sections of the of the harbor management plan and just review it and see if there's anything that we as a committee think needs to be adjusted so that would be a good idea like yeah any comments on on that uh hearing none i think um no. oh did you have something no yeah no are you going to make a motion to adjourn? I was thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> make a motion to adjourn. Love to. Second. Hold on. All, of, all approved? Aye. Aye. We're going to adjourn at 710.